21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah, all right. I've got an alarm for you. Okay. A 1952 Chevrolet hardtop painted two-tone green. Pennsylvania registration unknown. You are by transcription in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. Let me know if you see it on your post. The car was driven by suspects in an armed robbery. Okay. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. Before midnight, it had been a busy night in the precinct. There had been a mugging, a bad wreck on Fifth Avenue, and an armed robbery at a bar and grill on Lexington. After I turned out the platoon for the late tour at 12, things quieted down. I went out on patrol in sector car number three with patrolman Farrell as operator. After touring the northern end of the precinct to inspect patrol conditions, at 1.10 a.m., I instructed Patrolman Farrell to head downtown on 5th. Traffic on the avenue was very light, and according to my standing instructions for all cars at night, we proceeded at a very slow rate of speed in order to observe the benches between the sidewalk and the Central Park wall. After we crossed 84th Street, the traffic lights turned red, and Patrolman Farrell drew the car to a stop. The guy can explain all he wants to about high-pressure fronts and low-pressure fronts. All I know, Captain, is it gets pretty cold. Yep. If they just say tomorrow it's going to rain or the sun is going to shine all right, but you've got to be a bachelor of science nowadays to understand one of these weather reports. What's that cab driver doing over there, hmm? Well, it looks like he's got trouble with a passenger. Yeah. Go on through. Let's have a look. Let's see. That's it, all right. What's the trouble, Mac? I passed out dead drunk in a car. All right, Farrell, let's give him a hand. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't know why I always draw this kind of guy. Every time I, Can I, every time like I get a guy with a tuxedo, I can smell trouble. He's got some load on, all right. Where were you taking him? Where? I asked him where. Uptown. He said, drive uptown, and he let me know. Where'd you pick him up? 52nd Street oh, there. Come on, Mr. Had some babe with him. Come on, come on. He must have come out of one of the clubs. They got in a car and he should drive around the park. Right, well, you she see, says, no, I want to go home, she said. Guy says he wants to talk to her. So she says, okay, drive around the park a few minutes. He's out like a lion. Now you're telling me. So, so I come in the park and I drive around like he says. Well, he's getting a little bit uh, uh, free with the hands, but this babe knows how to take care of herself. He thrusts, she parries, you know what I mean? Then, then I see I better step in because I don't want no trouble in my car. So I went back and I tell him, look, mister, I tell him, I don't care what you do at home, but in my car, if a lady don't want to let you kiss her, you don't kiss her. He said I should drive the car and mind my own business. I told him if it wasn't my business, whose business was it? Uh, where'd she go? She had sense enough to cut loose at the first opportunity, which is more than I can say for myself. See what you can do with him, pal. That's it. I'm trying. All right. Where did she go? Well, we were in the park. First thing I figured I got to do was get out of there. Right, I came out of 72nd Street, and when I get there, the light is red. Right, so we grabs her again. She dodges him. She sees the car is stopped. She opens the door and gets out. This guy's really uh, been to the well, Captain. Yeah. Well, that's okay with me if she wants to beat it, and the guy don't seem to mind too much anyway. She walks across the avenue, and there's another house there. She flags him, and away they go. You know what I mean? I turn to the fellow, and I say, well, where do you want to go? And he says, uptown. I tell him, uptown is a big place. And he says, drive up fifth to let me know. So I turn up fifth. And the first thing you know, I don't hear another word out of him. So I turn around and I take a look at, he's out like a light. 
I think there's a spark of life left in him. Tuxedo. I got to draw this kind of guy. Every time I get a guy with a tuxedo. All right, now, come on, mister. The party's over. All right, come on, come on. Sit up. I appreciate you, but I didn't know what I was going to do with him. All right, all right. Let's see you. Tell you the truth, I was going to drive the station house. Feeling all right? Ask him where he lives, Farrell. Yes, sir. What do you live with, Mr. Fifth Amendment, Captain. Mm. We just want to see that you get home, that's all. I don't want to go home. See what I mean? See what I mean? Come on, come on. Where do you live? I want to go for a nightcap. You had your nightcap. Get him out of here, Farrell. That's it. Come on, mister. Get your hands off. Come on, come on. Get out of the car. Let's go. Get out of there. Get your hands off. Look, we wasted enough time with you, mister. Now get out. Come on. No. Okay, pal. Yes, sir. Come on, now. Let's go. Get your hands up. Come on. Let me alone. Stand up there. Go on. Stand up. Hey, for this. Watch him. I'll kill you. Watch him. I'll kill you. Get him up again. Come on. Come on. Get him up there. Come on. Now, keep still. Let me go. All right. Just stay still. Oh, you think you are? All right. Now, Believe me, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I I had a few drinks. You know how it is. Come on, be nice guys, will you? Why don't you be a nice guy instead of swinging at us? Well, I'm sorry about that. I'm I'm sorry I hit you. Did I do any damage? I, I didn't hurt you, did I? I'm sorry. That's good. Say sorry, mister. I had a couple of drinks. You know how it is. Driver, get his hat out of the car, will you? Yes, yeah, sir. Come on, huh? I'll be all right, I promise you. I know you'll be all right. Yeah, put it on his head. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Look, fellas, I, I, I'm okay. I, I, I know I was a little nasty. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, huh? Just let me go home. I'll, I'll go right to bed. I, I, I promise you, I'll, I'll go right to bed. I, I just live over on Park Avenue at 695. That's close. Yeah? Well, the station house is closer. The realization that he had been arrested took all the fight out of the man and most of the drunkenness. He identified himself as Charles H. Lowfield, age 33, 695 Park Avenue. Before we put him into the car, he paid the cab driver $2.20 fare that was on the clock. Farrell took the name and address of the driver and entered them into his memorandum book in case he was needed as a witness. We put Lowfield into the car and drove to the station house. There, we walked up the front steps with him and into the muster room where Lieutenant Gorman was on the job as desk officer and Sergeant Waters on telephone switchboard duty. As Patrolman Farrell took the prisoner in front of the desk to book him on charges of violation of Section 722 Penal Law, disorderly conduct, I headed around behind the desk to sign the blotter. All right, have we, Mr. Lawson. This, this isn't really necessary, is it? Captain, have you got a second? Yep. Uh, Lieutenant King is upstairs. He asked that I ring up there when you get in. Okay. As soon as I sign the blotter. Yes, sir. At 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Oh, Captain. Right. Just step right up to the desk. Okay, wait till you get to the end of your turn. I'm willing to go home and go to bed. What have we got, Farrell? It's awfully conduct. I apologize to you, didn't I? I told you I was sorry. What's the name? Charles H. Lowfield. L-O-W-F-I-E-L-D. Captain, I appeal to your better nature. I'm a responsible businessman. I know that I acted not exactly as I should, but there's no reason to arrest me. I had a few drinks. That doesn't make me a criminal, does it? No, you're not a criminal, Mr. Lowfield, but you caused a lot of people a lot of trouble. We were perfectly willing to help you and see that you got home all right. Well, I told you. I told you I was sorry about what happened. You refused our help. You clawed at us. You hit this officer two or three times with your fist. I told you I had a few drinks. If that's your explanation, Mr. Lowfield, it's lost on me. Captain, please. I'll be in my office, Red. Yes, sir. What's the age? 33. Get Lieutenant King for me, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Uh, 6.95, Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. 21st Precinct, Captain Canale. Lieutenant King's coming to the fall, Captain. Okay. 
Captain Canelli, Matt. Oh, yes, Captain. The chief of detectives office rang up here a little while ago. Yeah? I got a call from Philadelphia in regard to a stick-up down there. He got a line on one of the men supposed to have been involved. According to them, this fellow has a girl someplace on the Upper East Side, and they think he might have driven up to New York. That's so? But could you make an announcement at the 8 o'clock turnout about looking for the car parked on the street? Yeah, Matt, sure. It's a 1952 Chevrolet hardtop, painted two shades of green. Pennsylvania registration plate. Have you got the number? No, not yet, Captain. Philadelphia's trying to run it down. Okay. You think it would do any good to give it to the men on this tour as they ring in? All right, Captain. Sure, that might help. Okay, Matt. We'll get it out to them. Thanks. Right. All right, Mr. Lowfield. You'll have a hearing in this is next six quarters. 10 a.m. 10 a.m.? About finished, pal. Yes, Captain. What do I do until then? The bail is $500. Well, I don't have that much cash. You saw how much money I had, about $60. Do you have anyone who can go your bail? Well, where do I post it, here? Yeah, that's right. We'll take it here. Well, how do I get in touch with anybody? We'll make three telephone calls for you. Well, can I make them myself? No, we'll make them for you. Who would you want us to call? Well, I've got money for telephone calls. Why can't I make the call? Because the rules say you can't. Who do you want us to call? Well, you can call my lawyer. Captain, he's holding me on $500 bail. Now, I don't know whether I can get anyone up here with that much money at this time of night. If I can, I'll have to spend the night in jail. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Lowfield. That's the law. Excuse me. What's your lawyer's name, Mr. Lowfield? Sergeant. Yes, sir? As the men ring in, I want you to give them an alarm on a car. Yes, sir. A 1952 Chevrolet hardtop, two-tone green, Pennsylvania plate. Yes, sir. We don't have the registration number yet. Seven. But if they see a car answering this description, they're to ring in immediately. These are armed robbery suspects. Okay, Captain. And uh, you refer any information to the oh, detectives. Yes, sir. Call my secretary. The secretary? Yes. What's the man? Sandra Arid. You know her phone number? Well, no, I don't, but it's in the book. She lives in Greenwich Village on 9th Street or 10th Street. The only Sandra Arid. It's E-R-I-D-G-D. Okay, I'll look it up if I have to. But we'll probably be able to reach a lawyer or your brother. I'm sure you will, yes. All right, Mr. Lofield, back this way, huh? Listen, do you have to lock me up while I'm waiting? Can't I wait here? You better go on back with the officer. Well, I don't care to be locked up with a bunch of criminals. I'm not a criminal. You won't be locked up with any criminals. You are the only one back there tonight. You've got the place all yourself. Well, I think I'm entitled to wait here. I'm not going to go back there. Mr. Lofield, we had a lot of trouble with you earlier over what you would do and what you wouldn't do. Now, you better go on back there with the officer and let's not have any more trouble. I think it's a crime to lock up a decent citizen over something like this. It's a plain crime. Come on, Mr. Lowe. Well, it's just a plain crime, that's all. You haven't heard the end of this. Not yet, you haven't. It's a plain crime. Brother. Give me a bunch of thieves any day. Who did he ask you to call, Red? His lawyer? His brother and his secretary in that order. Oh. He's not married, huh? Oh, this is a kid. He was, he said. I better go out for you. What's his business? Investment. 52 Chevrolet hard time. Soon told Give you a hard time over there, I understand. Yeah, he was full of fright. A couple of hours in back there might cool him off. Connection with an armed robbery. 695 Park. That's a good address. Yes, sir, it sure is. Man ought to know how to behave himself. Not necessarily, Red. That can take a lot more than a good address. As soon as the prisoner had been lodged in the cell, Patrolman Farrell returned to the muster room, and with him, I left the station house to resume patrol. With certain exceptions defined by law, desk officers of the police department of the city of New York are required to take bail from or in behalf of any person arrested for a misdemeanor or an offense. In compliance, at 1.40 a.m., Lieutenant Gorman began to make the first of the three telephone calls requested by Mr. Lowfield. Give me a line on here, Sergeant. Yes, sir. What time are you taking your mail, Lieutenant? About 2 30, I guess. This lawyer is a sound sleeper. Well, I guess to put up with his clients all day, he has to be. Where does he live? I don't know. It's an El Dorado number. Not too far from here, I guess. No answer there yet. Captain, 
It's almost a quarter to two. Should be home. Maybe smart and shuts off his phone. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, we're not going to raise him. I'll leave the line up. I'll try the brother. Yes, sir. Put Farrell on reserve at 5 a.m. if he has to go to court. Yes, sir. Uh, we could take Meister off his post and put him in a car. Yeah, that'll be all right. Mr. Edward Lopio? Yes, sir. This is Lieutenant Garment at the 21st Precinct, Mr. Lopio. Yes, that's right, Mr. Lopio. We're holding him in $500 bail. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can keep holding that drunk and bum. All right, Mr. Lopio. You think I'm getting dressed at 2 o'clock in the morning? If I'm in the cold and bail him out, he's out of his mind. Okay. I told him last time I wouldn't do it again. If you're going to keep getting himself into these jams, you'd better carry bail money in his shoe or someplace. I've had enough. You don't have to yell at me, Mr. Lopio. I'm only calling because he asked me to. Okay, I don't blame you. Guy's got a good business. He makes a lot of money. The only trouble is he thinks life is one great big party. Well, you can tell him it's no party for me. Let him spend the night in jail. All right. Don't give me a message. I wish you would. Okay, Mr. Lopez. I'm sorry to bother you. That's all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. His brother says let him rock. Are you going to make another call? I've got to look up the number. Yes, sir. Says the night in jail will do him good. He can get an argument from the one that's in. Yeah, I guess he could. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Okay. Oh, listen, I've got an alarm for you. 1952 Chevrolet hardtop, two-tone green. Pennsylvania registration unknown. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. Sandra Evans. Yeah, that's right. If you see the car parked in your post, ring in here. It's wanted in connection with an armed robbery. Okay. Oh, three, eight, nine. Who's Sandra Edges? The secretary? Yeah. Right, give me a line on here, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Here. How should I know? Hello? Is this Miss Sandra Everidge? Yes. Who's this calling? This is Lieutenant Garman at the 21st Precinct. The police? That's right, yeah. What's the matter? Miss Everidge, we're holding a man here by the name of Charles H. Lowfield. Oh, my goodness. He asked us to call you. No, he's not hurt. He's being held on a charge of disorderly conduct. Mr. Lofield? That's right. He says you're his secretary. Yes, I am. He's being held in five hundred dollars bail. What does that mean? It means someone has to put it up for him or he'll have to stay in jail until court opens. In jail? Mr. Lofield? That's right. Well, I don't have that much money. Will you tell him I'll try to get hold of his attorney? I called his attorney. There's no answer. I already spoke to his brother. He can't make it. He can't? He says he can't. Oh, well, I don't know whether I can do anything. You tell Mr. Lofield I'll try. I'll see if I can get an idea. It'll take me a little while to get dressed and try to get some money, but you tell Mr. Lofield I'll be there. Tell him now. Don't forget. I won't. Tell him I'll, I'll try to get someplace. All right, I will. Tell him not to worry now. I'll tell him. Thanks. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You're welcome. Secretary Conning, Lieutenant? Yeah. Well, it proves it. The guy's got a good secretary. He's better off than with a family or a lawyer. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe he's in jail. 
Because of the delay involved in making the arrest, taking the prisoner to the station house and booking him, I remained out on patrol somewhat later than usual. With Patrolman Farrell, I toured the precinct from one end to the other, from Fifth Avenue to the river, in order to observe conditions that had been brought to my attention and to check on the efficiency of the men on the job. It was a little before 4 a.m. when the car pulled up in front of the station house. As we stopped, I saw the front door open and Lieutenant Matt King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, come down the steps to the sidewalk. Uh, I see you inside, Farrell. Yes, sir. Matt. Hello, Captain. Hey, don't you ever go home, Matt? That's where I'm headed now. Hello, Lieutenant. Farrell. Oh, I... Uh, we're giving an alarm on the Pennsylvania car to everybody on post. Oh, good. And uh, I'll call the attention of the men to it at the 8 o'clock turnout. Fine. These are a couple of good boys. They made them in three jobs down in Philadelphia. Yeah? They shot up a loan company office there yesterday. Um, this is the 21st precinct, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, good. Oh, good night, Captain. Good night, Matt. Well, I've got the money. What money is that? $500. Thank you. The bail money from Mr. Lopez. Oh, well, uh, you see the desk, Lieutenant, over there. Him? Yes, that's right. I got a message for you, Captain. That's right. All right, as soon as I sign the blotter. I've got the $500, the bail from Mr. Lopez. All right. Well, Captain. Right. And I'm telling you, it wasn't very easy to get it. I had to go see a friend of mine. She runs a dress shop, and I know she's open late, and she brings the receipts home with her. It took me an awfully long time to convince her to give it to me. Well, as long as you got it. Now, I won't lose this money. I'll get it all back. You'll get it back when Mr. Lofield shows up in court. You're sure now? Because I had an awful time getting it. Yes, you can get it back down at the court. Oh, that's good. Now, it's not that I don't trust Mr. Lofield. It's just that I thought maybe there were some charges that would have to be paid or something like that. I'm not worried about Mr. Lofield at all. Oh, where is he anyway? Can I see him? I'll just run for the attendant and bring him out. Oh. You want the money now? You hold on a little while. I've got a lot of papers to make down. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Bring Lofield out to the desk. He's sure it's here. Yes, sir. What did he do? Mr. Lofield, I mean. He got nasty and started swinging at a couple of police officers. Mr. Lofield? Yes. Oh, Mr. Lofield wouldn't do a thing like that. Wouldn't he? Well, he may be a hard man in business, but he, he's a gentleman. Well, he's always been a gentleman with me. Oh, well, he wasn't with me. I'm one of the policemen he was swinging at. Oh, my goodness. Your correct name is Sandra Erich, E-R-I-D-G-E? Yes, that's right. What's your address? Um, 225 West 10th Street. That's your permanent address? You're a householder within the county of New York? Yes, I live here. I have an apartment, if that's what you mean. Do you have some identification, Miss Erich, or uh, is it Miss? It's Miss Erich. You mean like a driver's license? Yes, that'll do. I think I have it with me, although I did take a cab. Yes, it's Thank you. I'm terribly sorry, Captain. I'm sure Mr. Lowfield is, too. Under normal circumstances, he wouldn't think of doing a thing like that. He's the kindest and most gentle man I've ever known. Well, maybe he is under normal circumstances. All right, step right up to the desk, Mr. Lowfield. Mr. Lowfield, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. You should be. Where were you? And how long have I been sitting back there in that cell? Well, I got here as fast as I could. I had an awful time. Well, look at me. Do you think I had a good time? You know how crummy it is back there? Mr. Lofield, I had to get dressed and find the money. I, I didn't know where to look. I had to impose upon a friend. And what about me? I've been sitting back there. All right, Mr. Lofield. I've been back there for four hours. I did the best I could. Miss Erich, you'll have to sign this and take an oath on it. What is it? I'll just sign it. Don't ask what it is. Well, I've got a right to know what it is if I'm signing it. It's a form, a statement that you're the owner of the currency that's offered for security. Oh. Well, I'd like to read it. Well, Sandra, now stop being an efficient secretary and don't waste time reading it. Just sign it. Just sign it so I can get out of here. Mr. Lowfield, I like you very much, but you're not going to talk to me like this. Well, you work for me, don't you? I work for you, but I don't have to listen to your abuse. Just sign the paper, Sandra. Now sign it. No, just a second. Sign it. It's only a matter of form. I won't sign it. The money doesn't belong to me. I borrowed it. I'm not worried that you borrowed it. I just want to make sure it isn't stolen. Now sign the paper. No, I won't. Now look, Sandra. You look, Mr. Lowfield. I was good enough to get up out of bed at 2 o'clock in the morning and, and go chasing around, waking up my friends, trying to raise this money. I, I don't expect you to be grateful, but I, I do expect you to be at least courteous. It's impossible for me to be courteous under these circumstances. Then it's impossible for me to be loyal. Good night, Mr. Lowfield. Oh, Sandra, I'm sorry. Sign the paper, Sandra. I may Please. not have a job in the morning, but at least I'll have my self-respect. 
Good night, Mr. Lowfield. Sandra. Good night, Sandra. Good night, Sandra. All right, Mr. Lowfield, you're not going anywhere. Just stay here. Sandra! All right, pal. You better take him back. Please, someone go after her. Tell her I'm sorry. You've been sorry for everything all night, Mr. Lowfield. Please, I can't stand another minute back there. That's what's got me so upset. Now, please, Captain, send someone to get her. I can't do that, Mr. Lowfield. I just want to get out of here. I've got to get out. You've got to give me a chance. You had your chance, Mr. Lowfield. It just walked out the door. First precinct, Sergeant Waters. A shooting? Where? Well, at the museum or near the museum? Well, who's doing the shooting? Well, are there any police officers there? Now, where is it exactly now? On the street or on the steps? Where? Talk into the phone, will you? All right. I'll send the officers right now. And on. so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct transcribed. A factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolmen's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly. Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters. Featured in tonight's cast were Elaine Ross, Bob Reddick, Mason Adams, Bill Quinn, Santos Ortega. Written and directed by Stanley Niff. Gaylord Avery speaking. <laughs>